Hey everybody, today we're going to look at how to anticipate what the voltmeter readings will be in a series circuit. We're going to end up using some series circuit laws, Ohm's law, Watt's law. Hi, so we're going to look at this series circuit and determine the values of the voltage at each resistor. And the way to do this is to look around until we find some values that we can use to get two totals in any one of our T's. I can see that I have 10 ohms, 20 ohms, and 30. From that, I can determine my R total. We know that in a series circuit, adding R1, R2, and R3 will give us our total resistance. In this case, 60 ohms of resistance is our total. Now I have two values in the totals T. 1 amp times 60 ohms will give me 60 volts. And that comes from Ohm's law e equals I times R equals the voltage. Now in a series circuit, one amp as a total will also be one amp at every resistor. So I can go ahead and put one amp in each one of my T's for every resistor. Now I have two numbers at those T's and I can figure out the value of the voltage at e each resistor. So again, using Ohm's law, E equals I times R. One times 10 here will give me 10 volts. 1 times 20 here will give me 20 volts, and 1 times 30 gives me 30 volts. And then I have to double check. Do those three voltages add up to my source? Because we knew that E total equals E1 plus E2 plus E3, and 10 plus 20 plus 30 does give me 60 volts. So I know that my Ohm's law values are all correct. The next thing I want to do is determine what a voltmeter would read across these items. And we see that E1 here has one line going to each side of R1. Now as long as there's no switch open in this circuit, we don't have a switch, that means the electrons are flowing and these voltages are in fact happening at this instant in time. So E1 will read the value of the difference between the buildup of electrons on this side. Remember, electrons travel from the negative of the battery source out and through and around back to positive. Because of the resistance, it's like a narrow tunnel. There is a buildup of electrons on one side and a deficiency on the other side. And the electrons would like to get through, but they can't because of the resistance. And the voltmeter actually measures the difference between the buildup and the hole on the other side. So in this case, the voltmeter would read the 10 volts across R1 and E5 would read, R5 would read the 20 volts there and R6 would read 30 volts there. If I was to put a voltmeter across two of the resistors, say I was to go in here and add a voltmeter, we could use Kirchhoff's voltage law to determine what that voltmeter would read. Around any closed loop, the algebraic sum of the voltage drops is zero. Remember that the source here is a positive and each one of these resistors is a negative. So if I start out with 60 volts and I go around here, then I'm measuring how much the voltmeter will read plus E6. And E6 in this case is 30 volts. So if I start with 60 volts as a positive, plus a drop of 30 volts, I end up with 30 volts missing. That 30 volts is what my voltmeter would read. So this voltmeter will read 30 volts. Now if you notice, that's also the value of E1 and E5. 